And now, another exciting episode of As the River Churns. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Hopefully you all got a chance to see the shirt that we're going to have for all of the residents and staff. Um, we, uh, we're excited about the shirt. Matter of fact, we want to encourage residents to fill out their forms for the shirts. Um, we are doing very well with staff, I think, at the moment, we Lisa. We've yeah. got yeah. over 200 of our staff members now have gotten shirts. or right. They're right. We're about two-thirds way there. So. About two-thirds away with the yep. staff, and so we're pushing on getting the resident orders in. Right. I think we had wanted to ha try and have those by tomorrow. We might have to extend that we're a little bit. We're going to extend it, yes. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have to, I Give think. Give people a little more time. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So, but you could see that was the back of the shirt. And if you really, I'm assuming you could read it from the uh, the TV screen, but if you, could, if you couldn't, the tree itself kind of comes up and on the trunk of the tree, it has the residents, residents listed on there. And then on the little leaves, it has all of the different departments on there. And so it's, you know, we're all together. The idea here is we're all together, rooted in service, and all together as a family. So um, lots of good choices as far as the shirt goes. And I, I think you have, is that is that shirt a sample of something? That yep, we're going to show it in just a little bit here. Oh, okay, it's part of something question. else. Yes. Okay, yep. all right, fair enough, fair yep. enough. So um, um, want to make sure that we have say hi to our guests today, Wiz Horner and Jim Kalecki, if you all would do the honors of flipping the... <laughs> we're putting them to work. Yes, we are. Here we go. Got a Ph.D. and a barely bachelor's degree. We ought to be able to handle it. <laughs> yeah, and you got to tap the top. It. Yep. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. So the first 30 seconds is up already here, so we're already losing time. But... Um, <laughs> Well, gents, we're, we're really excited about having you all here today, and we'll get a chance to talk to you in a few minutes, but I think, we, as you know, as part of our show, we have a little routine that we do. So, Lisa, do you want to share about yes. the trivia question okay. today? The trivia question today is from John Hoyt, um, and the winner today will get one of the vegetable boxes. So that's very exciting. Oh, yeah, that's great. So it has zucchini and lettuce and corn and tomatoes and all that good stuff. So... A uh, vegetable box will come your way if you know the answer to this question. What city was the European green capital for 2019? European green capital. What cap city was the European capital, green capital, yeah. for 2019? All right. Okay. All right, you guys might know this, so don't give it away Don't yet. say it. Don't say it. You, I know you want to win that box, but you can't. You're, sh you're guests on the show today, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so no if you worries from my. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the answer, you're gonna call Michelle at 336-389-4103. That's 336-389-4103, and the lines are now open. Now open. <laughs> and no calls yet, so. All right. Now's your chance. John, you know, John Hoyt likes to throw these zingers in because I really he think that he thinks he comes up with he's got a questions. chance of getting the – he gets the prize instead of giving it to somebody That's else. That's part but. of his motive, yes. Yes, yes. I think that is. So, <laughs> Fortunately, the residents are smart enough here to outsmart him, and I think that works <laughs> out pretty good. So. Okay, so um, as typical, let me just quickly go over some of the latest uh, statistics for the, um, the coronavirus. Um, we, as of today, so we, we were on yesterday, so let me just kind of share with you how we compared today to what we did yesterday. Um, they did about 7,000 additional tests between yesterday and today, so we're at 171,328 tests completed as of today for the state of North Carolina. Of that, 13,397 are confirmed cases. That's 639 additional from yesterday. And again, that 7.8% again today, and we're, and we're starting to can, kind of start to see that number go down a little bit, which that percentage go down a little bit, which is good. We have uh, 525 in the hospital, which is about nine more than what it was yesterday and still kind of staying in that range. And as we mentioned before, we have 99 of the 100 counties. Um, most of the counties themselves went up between 12 and 24 within the last... Um, within the last day, and that includes Guilford and Forsyth. 
Mecklenburg had the biggest number of increases. They went up 72 cases from yesterday, from 1850, 1850 to 1922. And then just looking at it from strictly from a, a residential care communities, nursing homes, um, we did have an increase of 60 from yesterday. Um, so that's 2,374 of the total cases are from nursing homes and residential care facilities in North Carolina. Um, I didn't mention this, I don't think, but we, um, we have a total of 507 deaths from the COVID-19 in North Carolina. That's 30 more than yesterday, and um, 290 of those are coming from nursing homes and residential care facilities, so that's right around that 56, 57 percent of what we've had the last several days. And the number of uh, nursing homes, retirement communities that have had an outbreak, we were at 85 yesterday, and we were 85 again today, so that did not increase uh, between yesterday and today. So, you know... Um, we keep hearing um, that, and you know, the governor's office has been pretty good about saying that, you know, we have flattened that curve, and so I think we really have. I mean, when you look at our numbers, we're not seeing the huge spikes. We're not seeing the the huge numbers that, you know, fortunately that North, uh, that New York and New Jersey and you know, uh, who is it, Massachusetts and. Um, Anyway, a couple of those states that really have had a lot, a lot of outbreak, you know, we're not seeing that fortunately here in North Carolina. And, e and even with the number of increased tests that were, I mean, because, you know, that was one of the things North Carolina was trying to do was really increase the tests. If you remember, for a while there, we were only at two or 3,000 tests per day that we were doing. Right. You know, now it's, they're up to seven, 8,000 tests a day. And the, and the percentage is going down. So I, to me, that's a, that's a good sign for yeah. us. Um, so, you know, now that we flatten out the curve, I think the big question is, okay, so how flat and how long does the curve stay in effect, right? So, you know, when and if are we going to start really starting to drop in number of cases? And so, you know, it might be that reality is that we might have hit a level here where we're just going to maintain this level for a period of time. Um, and so there really won't even be a curve. It's just kind of more of a flattening out. We'll just have to see. I mean, I'm no expert on this. Um, it's just this was kind of an observation I had about that. But, um, you know, I think we're all hoping that uh, we can continue to drop the number of positive cases, um, reduce the number of people in the hospital, and certainly reduce the number of deaths uh, because of this. So, Lisa, you were reminding me that, you know, not to try and minimize coronavirus, but, you know, we also know that with flu, the flu takes a lot of people on a yearly basis. And, you know, this is a flu, but it's it's more than a flu, I think, because it's just because it's so contagious and because it's so um, uh, vulnerable for our vulnerable comp uh, 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 right. community, our right. vulnerable population. Absolutely. So, And this is on top of the flu. It's those deaths right. on top of what that we're already That is true. This is an add-on, isn't right. it? So right. it, makes it, it makes it harder. Right. So. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. You know, tomorrow, I think you all know, we talked about this yesterday on the show, tomorrow... Um, we start phase one for North Carolina, and I think we all hope and pray that phase one goes well, yes. and we get to phase two. And, you know, I, I can tell you um, uh, from um, executive director perspective, working with um, our corporate office and with our trade association here in North Carolina, we've got the ear of the governor right now in the governor's office because we are asking things like, which I was talking about, alluding to a little bit yesterday, which is, you know, he has said as part of his three-phase plan that congregate care facilities and nursing homes were going to really be seeing no changes during the three phases. Well, you know, we look at that as being more nursing home, not so much independent living. And so we're trying to, there's 63 retirement communities in North Carolina. So, you know, as part of our trade association, we are going back to the governor's office and saying, you know, we think there's a distinction between the independent living part of our community and the nursing home part of the community. And so we're starting to try and have those conversations up front because, you know, phase one is not going to change a whole lot for us here. But phase two, you know, I think we really could start to see some potential changes. And so, you know, my hope is that they'll look at us um, from the independent side as different than the nursing home side, and that will allow us to start maybe – you know, scaling back a little bit of some of the restrictions that we're doing. That would be great. Yeah, and that's, I know that's what we're all hoping for. So, 
you know, you have my word that we're working on that. Right. And uh, we've got not just River Landing pushing this, but we've got, um, you know, 63 retirement communities throughout the state that are all, you know, asking these questions and asking the governor's office to take that into consideration. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay. Lisa, what else do we got? Okay. Let's see. Well, we already reminded them to make sure to order your T-shirt. Yes. That's a big thing. Yes. And, and we really tried to keep the cost. If you want extra shirts, because, you know, right. some of you may have trouble with deciding on the color. You know, uh, I, there's a lot of really good colors in there. And so I know I'm going to be ordering more than one. <coughs> and I already, you know, some of my, my family's already seen the shirts. And, of course, my mom, when my family sees a River Landing shirt, it's like, well, I want one, I want one, I want one. I want one. So everybody wants one. So, you know, so maybe it was selfishly on my part we kept the cost of the shirts low because <laughs> I knew it was right. going to cost me a fortune to buy oh, shirts for my family. Yeah. But, you know, $7, the, the idea there is just to cover the cost right. for the shirt, right. the extra shirt. And. That's not a whole lot to pay for a right. T-shirt. We've had a lot of folks order extra shirts. So yeah, we have. Been surprised We've seen it with that. the staff, we have. which has been really great. Yes. Yep. Which has been really great. So yep. um, so just don't forget to do that. Uh, Mother's Day, just as a reminder, um, that evening we're closing our dining venue, so we're only open for Mother's Day lunch that day. Right. So and Special it, lunch. Special lunch, yep. Right. The beef tenderloin and the pork loin and... Um, if you want to order a box meal for that night, you'd get it at the lunchtime. Um, but you want to make sure to turn in your order for us so we can have those prepared and ready. Yeah. So, um, the delivery team, they also are having adjusted hours on Sunday. So they'll be there to deliver from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Just this coming Sunday only. That's the only change is for Mother's Day. <coughs> and let's see. This was a big one, Tom. Yes. The flowers that Scooter ordered. Yes. For you all. Um, most of the flowers are coming by the end of today. So he will start delivering tomorrow. That's the plan. Deliveries tomorrow. Right, right. Um, they were having some trouble with getting some of the hanging baskets. The, so I can't promise that all of those. Geranium ones, I think. Yes, the what he specifically said. the geraniums. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, People were running a shortage on those in right. the nursery that we went through. Right. Um, they've been having some trouble with those. So Scooter's working on that, and he's yeah. hoping to work it out, but no promises on the geranium baskets. Yeah, and so. I think it's, it's important to point out that his main source has said that normally the week of Mother's Day is like their crazy sure. week. Right. But they've had the week of Mother's Day for the last four weeks. Right. <laughs> um, and I think that's a, re that's a reflection of, People staying home, people working on their homes, people are, are doing things other than what they normally would be going out to do. And so they're planting flowers like crazy. And so, you know, the reality is that we are having trouble getting some of the product. And so right. Scooters had to go to second and third sources to try right. and find it. And uh, the good news is he's got most of it. Mm -hmm. It's just we know yeah, that just the, few baskets just the that baskets work. with the geraniums is really, I think, the only thing that he's got that's yep. still uh, uh, he's still looking for. So we'll see okay. if we can get those. Yep. Um, okay. And then I think this is a good place to announce that, um, you know, we talked about um, and sent a letter out. Dan Phillips sent a letter out about the um, um, staff assistance fund. Mm -hmm. And um, we have already had a lot of generous donations towards that. Lisa, you mentioned yesterday that um, we had several of our winners from the uh, reverse raffle that had. Now I think we've had all. I think all of all the winners have given, themselves have given given something, toward given something that. towards the, the, the staff assistance that's, fund. That's which pretty amazing. That's, right. that's great. Yes. Absolutely. That's great. And quite honestly, it's already risen for River Landing's purposes. It's already over $10,000. Yeah. So yeah. In that's what, in a very short a period of time. So less than a week. So thank you. That's very, yep. that's very cool that uh, the residents are stepping up and doing that. I yep. appreciate that. So I thought that might be a good mm -hmm. thing to kind yeah. of mention today. Absolutely. So, okay, okay. What, we have some questions okay, today, right? Okay, we have right? a few questions today. Uh, more of it's some clarifications. So, what is the limit on grab-and-go items? Uh-oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lisa, what is the limit on grab-and-go <laughs> items? <laughs> so, the limit on grab-and-go items, and let's clarify. I got out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> let's clarify what grab-and-go items are. Right, yes, please. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing Kent's not on the show. <laughs> So that's your milks, your cereals, your bananas, your apples. It's things like that. It's your grab-and-go items. Yeah. So it's two per person. Two per okay? person. Two per person. Does that sound right? Have you all run so into that? Two so. people. 
So if you have two people, you could get four then total, because you each could get two. I thought that would be explained. Tom might have some difficulty with that. <laughs> 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 oh, so, so you and your wives, you each could get two. So you could walk out of there with four items. Yes. But if it's an individual person, it's two items. So. Right. So I hope that cleared that up. Um, yes. Okay. Then now what if now what if they grab an eight and then they left later? Can they get more then when they leave that way? See, so you know, that's only grab and go, right? So. Well, since there's no communal dining, they can't eat it there. So it's it's oh. only grab and go, right? Well, if I'm if I grab it like I'm in my golf cart picking it up at the at the clubhouse, and okay. I get a grab and go, and I quickly eat like two Twinkies or whatever it is, really fast. Could you get in line could again? I, could I get in line again and get and get two more because it's kind of grabbing and going kind of thing? I think you'd get points for that. <laughs> I mean, it's a potential. I, I, I think we should form a committee to study. Yeah, we should. <laughs> As good Presbyterians, we should do that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to go on from there. Yes, <laughs> probably a good idea. Okay. I really took us down a rabbit hole there, let yes, me tell you. Yes, So another food question. What is the limit on desserts? So that's a very good question. It is a good question. So at this point, it's one dessert per person per meal. So you can get two desserts a day. Yeah. And these are the desserts that are, you know, the specials of the day, the slices of pie, the cake, those kind of desserts. Um, so we're having more and more trouble getting some of the products um, because U.S. Foods obviously used to service a lot of restaurants. Right. Well, their, their business obviously went down quite a bit. So what happened is they're finding harder times getting some of the things. So right. uh, we have had to put in place that one dessert per person per meal. So if it's a couple, once again, you each could get a dessert, um, and then you can come back again at night and get another dessert. Mm -hmm. So I think that works out for folks, but someone just asked me to clarify that today. Got just it. Keep the lemon bars coming, though. Keep the lemon bars yeah. coming. Like okay. the lemon bars? Okay. Love the lemon bars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Yep. Okay. Um, what is on the leaves on the River Landing Family Tree T-shirt? Yeah. So that you all saw that today with the photo of the day, um, but just want to... People wanted me to announce what's actually on the leaves. Let's do it. So the residents are on the trunk. So that's our base, right. right? That's the base. And then on the leaves, we have nursing, EVS, which represents housekeeping, public safety, maintenance, resident services, HR, dining, the clinic, wellness, therapy, marketing, golf and grounds, volunteers, MSO. And what's MSO stand for, Wiz? OSM. <laughs> That's office, our corporate folks. The, the That's our corporate of folks. Facility management. <laughs> <laughs> office of facility management. Oh, I need to remember that one. Oh. <laughs> They'll love that. Uh, the beauty salon, Shepherd's Way Daycare, and Bank of Oak Ridge. So we incorporated, or incorporated our departments here, yeah. as well as some of our partner vendors that are here on site. That's right. So that's our therapy, the D salon. The ones that are here Sweaty. every day, yeah. or pretty yeah. much every they're day. They're part of our And they're part of our here. family. That's yes. right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so the trees on the back of the, sh of the shirt. So the picture you saw, that's on the back. And on the front is our logo. Um, also the hashtags, we have rooted in service and six feet apart forever in our hearts. So that kind of represents what we're going through during these times that we'll, we'll always remember this time with a T-shirt. So <laughs> We uh, might want to burn T-shirts when this we, is over. We but might. We <laughs> might. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we can have a big bonfire with the T-shirts after should. a while. That might be a good way to... Now, we just heard that before coming down, Tom. Someone said we need a big party at the end and burn our masks. Oh, the masks would even be better. Yeah. So I guess we idea. could do that. So... Um, and the last question today, related to the t-shirt again, yes. is the community t-shirt a men's shirt? So I brought what the style of shirt is. So if Brian can zoom in here, our 15th anniversary shirt is the same style shirt that we're going to have for the River Landing community shirt. So if you look at it, it's, it's a unis they call it a unisex shirt. So it's not male or female. Um, it's got the rounded collar. You can see that it's not a V-neck. I've had some people question that. It's 100% cotton. Um, and from what we know, because we've had them for several years now, 
They wash very well. Yeah. They did not shrink. Right. They're pretty true to size. Um, and they didn't fade a whole lot. They I, really I, did. They really have kept their color. Yep. Even. yep. They've yeah. done very well with that. So, of course, it won't be tie-dyed, the one you're getting, but the stylus shirt is just like this. So hopefully Brian was able to get a good close-up for us. Well, and Lisa, even the manufacturer of the shirt is the same. It's the same. Yeah. Yep, same weight, same <coughs> yeah. brand, so everything. We, we know how much everybody liked the 15th anniversary right. shirts. Right. That's why we tried to keep it pretty close to the same. Yep. So that way, just to give you an idea of, it's always hard to choose what size, but, but generally these fit pretty true to size. The only shirts that we thought were a little small was the smalls were a little small. Yeah. Smaller than a normal small. Right. Um, but the rest of the sizes, they really were pretty accurate pretty to accurate. what you normally wear. Yeah, and we, and we said this earlier, but we'd love to have all of our residents. I mean, we're, we're, you're not paying for the shirt. Right, This right. is a freebie, um, and, and it's, a, it's really a, shine, a, sh a show of support for our family here at Riverland. It's right. not just our staff. It's staff and residents together right. and our extended family members with uh, Bank of Oak Ridge and a few of the other ones that we yep, mentioned. It's, absolutely. It's, it's a show of force. It's a, it's a show of strength. It's a show of family. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Are now we we're to the best part. Yes. We get to talk Ooh. to Wiz and Jim. <laughs> I love this. So, wow. So, you know, Wiz, does it feel different being on the show and not being in some sort of alter ego here, you know, or alter, you know, some sort of, you know, you've come as a couple different, and I won't spoil it for anybody that didn't oh, know Wiz, who you were. Wiz has been but, on uh, before? Yeah. yeah Wiz I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it doesn't feel any different, apparently. Okay. No. I, I was I was just relieved that I wasn't going to be interviewed by uh, my esteemed colleague here. Yes, Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know they're um, they're still talking about that um, episode from last week up at uh, our uh, office of facility management. Yes, right. <laughs> That was great. As a matter of fact, they can't wait for it to be loaded on to YouTube right. because they're all very interested in seeing it. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent. That's good. Yeah. Well, it, it just shows that uh, Mr. Weber has a great sense of humor, I think. <laughs> I called him that this week. <laughs> and you know what he told me? What? This is, this is pretty fascinating. You just made me realize this. His nickname when he was younger was Weber. Was Weber. <laughs> really? I don't know if that was a guess on your part or not, yeah, or, yeah. or Leonard's, excuse me, on Leonard's part or yes. not, but that was amazing how oh, that yeah. worked out, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all aren't here to talk about our Office of Silly Management today. No, we're here to talk about uh, couples golf. Yeah, oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> couples golf? <laughs> After this morning, I need to go play couples golf <laughs> instead of what I was trying to play this morning. But okay. Uh, so, you know, Wiz, um, I don't know how much we were going to get into the how it got started. Are you going to talk a little bit about that? A little that? bit about that. Okay. Yeah. So right. do you want me to ask you questions or do you want to just kind of no, talk? I want or? you to sit there and be quiet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a setup. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I've been told. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about the Employee Scholarship Program. Uh, this was started back in 2016. We had a wonderful lady here by the name of Mary Walter Schaefer. And Mary was our marketing director, head of uh, marketing and sales. And she'd been here for about four years, came in 2012, I guess. And uh, sh she passed away very suddenly, very surprisingly yeah. uh, in 2016. And she was a very beloved lady here, yeah, no doubt is. about it, by, by the staff and by the residents. And um, a number of, of residents and staff folks also said that they would like to do something to memorialize yeah. uh, Mary. Um, John Hoyt was the chair of the resident council at that time. I was, uh, was, was the vice, vice chair that year. And we had a number of suggestions and what we decided to do was to start the River Landing Employee Scholarship Fund. And Mary was such a big believer in education and yes, so she forth. Was. So we thought that that would be something good that she would appreciate and her family would appreciate. So we got that started in um, talking about it in 2016. And we solicited donations from the residents uh, many staff also 
um, put in some money into that. We had some vendors yes. uh, who also did that. And then Mary's family yes. also That's right. uh, provided some, uh, some, some money into that. We started a scholarship committee uh, that was Jan Kuntz and Maxine Foster, John Hoyt, and myself. And, uh, what, uh, and Jim's going to talk a little bit about what that process and so forth is, is in a few minutes. The first year which, uh, that we had our uh, ceremony was 2017. Uh, we didn't have that much money to work with. We actually only had a thousand dollars drawing out of the money that we had selected uh, or had collected so far. Uh, but management here put in a thousand dollars and also the residence council put in a thousand dollars. So we had three thousand dollars to work with our first year in 2017. Uh, we had six employees uh, that received scholarships that first year. And then in 2018, um, there was another foundation that was started, the Charles and Alice Fisher uh, Foundation, two separate pots of money. That's right. Uh, Charles and Alice were residents here for a number of years, were yeah. absolutely, absolutely great people. And... Um, their family and so forth also wanted to have something to memorialize those two folks. So we got involved uh, with them in that too. So in the second year, 2018, our fund had grown. So between the two funds, um, we had $5,000 that we were able to uh, give, out in, give out in awards. And last year, uh, we had 13 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to give out $10,000 that we had drawn down from those foundations. And um, we also had, there was really 14 employees because one in addition uh, was a staff member here who had never finished high school. Right. And she wanted to get her GED and it was a little bit too much money for her to go through the training and so forth and to, and to pay for the tests and so forth. So we did a sort of a special um, thing for her. Matter of fact, Jim worked with her on that and, and helped her work her way through that. So in the, two, in the three years that we have had the fund going, um, we have had 26 awards total for a total of $18,250. So that was a pretty good start for our first, for our first three years. Yep. The funds are uh, handled by the... Presbyterian Home Foundation. That's the Five Foundation. The Five. Five Foundation. <laughs> Some people weren't aware of it last week. Uh, that foundation um, uh, handles that separately from the other money that the foundation handles. Uh, and so far, the River Landing Employee Scholarship Fund is at $206,000. Wow. And the Fisher Foundation is at one hundred and forty-three. dollars Wow, so we've got close to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars between those two funds uh, that we will be able to make um, some um, uh, make our money for for awards this year. What we do is we the foundation allows us to take three point five percent of what that total is, and that is the money that we have to work with um, for our awards and plus the $1,000 that management, I'm sure, will continue to put in. I'm sure. And the resident council, I'm sure Dan will be, be, <laughs> be putting in also. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> kind of the way it goes sometimes. Um, a couple of examples of, of the employees, and Jim's going to talk a little bit about the ceremony itself and, and, and what that means to us as residents and, and to the employees. But I already mentioned the, uh, the lady who just needed to get the GED so she could get herself going as far as her education was concerned. We've also got a mother and daughter combination uh, over in healthcare who have gotten awards for the last couple of years, they which have. is really yep. kind of neat. That's fun too. And a lady I want to mention specifically, Jermina Ilonga. Um, she started here about eight or nine years ago working in dining service. Um, she wanted to better herself. Uh, she talked to the human, re human resources director at the time, and she was advised then, well, if you want to move along, particularly at this organization, maybe a CNA would be something that you would be interested in doing. Mm -hmm. um, she had already moved from there to uh, a housekeeper over in Pebble Beach, 
so she was working on her CNA. Uh, she got that, and she's been over in St. Andrews for a number of years working as a CNA. Mm -hmm. And while she's been doing that, she has also gotten her bachelor's degree. And tomorrow, we'll be receiving her master's degree in uh, healthcare administration. Yeah. So that's just a typical uh, type of person that, that this uh, awards go to help out. So um, you're probably sitting there wondering, well, how in the world can I possibly add to that fund? I've got a commercial for you. <laughs> uh, as I say, the two funds are administered by the Presbyterian Homes Foundation. Uh, the donations are tax deductible, uh, and Marissa Ray, over in the MSO, <laughs> is the person that you would contact over there, and I'll give you her phone number. It's 336-886-6553, 336-886-6553, and talk with Marissa, and um, she will be glad to take your money. <laughs> um, if, there, if, you, if you didn't get that number written down, I'm sure Michelle can probably get you uh, in touch with her. Um, okay, Jim, who is uh, the council member who is on our committee, is going to talk a little bit about uh, the committee and the process that we went through and so forth, and then I'll wrap up with a little announcement at the end. Jim. Thank you. Um, I am... Um thrilled to be here and, and, and if you'll indulge me for a second with a story that I just thought about as we were listening before I came to River Landing two and a half years ago I knew about the scholarship committee and that was the thing I wanted to get involved with but what I thought about as you were talking was was when I was growing up in Ireland um, they had in schools over there um, academic scholarships that you could sit for. And I had recalled, as we're talking, that I got to sit for one of those um, one year. And, and it took me two or three times to, to actually get it, but I did get it. And, um, and it covered my academic expenses for the last four years of secondary wow. school wow. Wow. in wow. Ireland. And so when I tell you I'm coming from the heart um, with this, t this whole topic, um, that's my proof. My second bit of proof is that when I came to America, I, within 10 months after I got here, I was in the army because um, I wanted to get it out of my service obligation out of the way. And so I was in and out of the army by the time I was 20 and became the fortunate recipient of the GI Bill. Um, and the rest of my work life since then, more or less, has been in and out of uh, universities and community colleges. And I've had uh, a rich life of having been able to participate in giving scholarships um, at various places along the way. And um, so to be a part of this discussion is just, I mean, I, I just get goosebumps when I think <laughs> about it. Um, the process that people go through, um, all of the staff who meet certain criteria for, um, <clears throat> there are a few criteria for eligibility, but basically they can apply for um, a scholarship. With the application, they typically have been accepted at some, uh, either a community college, a university, or some post-secondary um, uh, organization in um, the area, though beyond the area, I guess at times too. Um, the employee um, gets the supervisor to sign off on their application. Um, and I should point out at this stage, if you as residents know of employees who you think might be a good applicant, please urge them to get in touch with their supervisors because right now the, the applications became available on the 1st of May. The deadline is the 31st of May. And then in June, the scholarship committee, whom uh, Wiz has pointed out already, um, will 
review the applications, will conduct interviews, and all going well in, uh, in uh, I believe it's the 27th of January, uh, sorry, the 27th of Ju July, July. Um, yeah, we'll have the uh, ceremony. And my two cents at this stage, particularly for if the question comes up, well, is my school going to be in place or are they going to be working in the fall? Let's assume that they are because I can assure you that the school needs the money yes. uh, sure. more than anyone else and, and there'll be online options mm. and so forth. So don't let this deter people from um, putting in an application. And if for some reason or other it's got to be held over, we'll sort that one out when, uh, when we get to it. Right. The committee, as I say, reviews applications. The interview process uh, last year where we interviewed the 13, I believe, um, people who were finalists was absolutely one of the most heartwarming um, things that I've had the experience of being through, not only here, but, but anywhere else. And then let me just finish with um, my own two cents worth about the actual ceremony, which goes on in this room. Um, the winners are here, their families are here, lots of staff are here, and lots of residents are here. And as the room is pretty well full. And the first year I came here, um, I went to this event and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to because I had heard about the scholarship thing. I'd only been here about maybe about three months at the moment. And prior to this, the, the thing that I had appreciated more as a, a really classy event in, in this kind of league was at Harvard University at graduation, they give out honorary doctorates. And the honorary doctorates are usually about eight or ten people um, that are world-renowned people, Nobel laureates, and um, Angela Merkel, the Prime Minister of Germany, was there last year, and so they're people of that ilk. And the citation that's given at Harvard, um, even though they've done amazing things, is never more than three or four sentences. And it's absolutely spot on. And I thought that was the creme de la creme until I came to River Landing. <laughs> and until, um, if I can put this thing and look at you straight in the face <laughs> instead of through the time, um, until I met you, Wiz. And I'll never forget, I'm starting to shake just telling this story already. But the first time I came, um, I was sitting out in the audience, the committee was up here, and people started parading. And Wiz was the master of ceremonies, and um, I'm tempted to say what a whiz you were and are, but... Haven't heard that one before, have um, you? <laughs> Cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me raise the level again, or try to raise <laughs> the level again to where I was going. But the citations that Wiz had created and talked about each candidate um, as they came up, and again, there was only probably two or three sentences, um, but it made the event at Harvard just pale by comparison. Wow. Now, Harvard still puts on a pretty good show, well, surely. But, um, but River Landing just absolutely did, um, my microphone is knocking, I'm, I'm getting too excited here. Um, but it's absolutely um, a thing to behold. And for those of you that haven't been here, um, if you are here on whatever date that is, towards the end of July, it'll be well advertised. Um, please plan and come. And Wiz, I am certainly looking forward to your next round of citations because um, it gives class a new yes, meaning. Yes, it does. Yep. Well, I, I thank you for that. Well, I, I appreciate that, but it's undeserved because the only thing that I do is to take a few sentences, a few words from what the applicants have said and just repeat those for everybody to hear. Yeah. Because those are so heartwarming, I yeah. think. Yeah. And I couldn't make up anything that would certainly be any better than that. So 
I just sort of plagiarized that, you know. And, and but you're that. such a brilliant plagiarist. Oh. I mean, <laughs> you're a wizard, though, right? Could have, <laughs> could have been a politician tonight. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the committee and who was on it. Jan Kuntz rotated off of the committee this year, so we had a vacancy. And we sent out an announcement, I guess, what, about five or six weeks ago or so, something like that, asking residents if they had some interest in, in being on the committee. And we got 11 people who were wow. extremely well qualified and who were interested in being on the committee. Um, we narrowed that down somehow or other to three, and um, the committee met with those three. And the person that we selected um, is Gay Brown. You know, Gay has been a resident here for at least, I guess, eight or nine years or so. We've been here six, and she's been here a couple years longer than we have. Uh, she's an excellent choice. Um, she said she is the one, interestingly enough, who actually suggested that we do some sort of a scholarship program at the time that Mary Walter Schaefer passed away. Right. So it's interesting that it's come full circle that she was one of the people who suggested that, yeah. and now she is, uh, she's on the committee, so that's, that's great. Very poetic. Um, Gay has um, uh, a lot of activities that she's been involved in here, and she has a bachelor's and a master's degree in education, and she also has a master's of divinity. Um, so she knows the importance of scholarships because, like Jim, uh, she had to get a number of scholarships herself as she was working her way through, uh, working her way through school. Um, so anyway, we're extremely pleased to have Gay being on the committee. And John Hoyt rotates off next year, uh, so there will be another vacancy next year. So someone will be rotating off every year, so there will be opportunities for folks who are interested in being in involved in this process to to let us know and i might if if i might just quickly mention now that i'll be rotating off the resident council this year and um if there are people interested in both the resident council and perhaps being the council's representative to this committee that it's another avenue. option may be there too right that's right well, we, we thank you guys, and we thank the committees for their work. Um, you know, I, Jim was right, Wiz. You do an awesome job as master of ceremony yeah, for the you. event. And, and and Jim, you know, just um, you're right in the fact that um, we Lisa and I get a, get a chance to be a part of the interview process for the staff, and it is just very heartwarming. I, I almost wish we could publicize those <laughs> oh, events because yeah. I think every resident here would go, Wow, this is amazing, and yeah. so um, it's just it's a it's a great it's a real good feel good story, and you know this year, you know we're going to be able to do more than ten thousand dollars this yes. year too, which is going to be really good. So um, so it's very exciting to see those numbers go up and the opportunities for staff go up as, along with that. So, yeah. but thank you both for your your contribution towards that. Thank you. All right, Lisa, we got a couple okay. more things to do before we can call it a day, right? We do. So we have we have one birthday today. Okay. Uh, that is Clyde Cook. Oh, happy birthday, Clyde. Uh, yes. He's happy birthday. Fishing. He was, well, is he fishing today? He's I thought he was fishing, fishing the other day. <laughs> we saw him the other day. He yeah. was fishing. So. He caught a fish. He had a... <laughs> it was kind of petrified. <laughs> not sure what that was. He said he caught one about this pig, and I looked at it and went, oh, it's still on the line. It's, and it's not a real fish. <laughs> it, it was, was interesting. Um, let's see. Then we have no birthdays tomorrow. We won't be on the show tomorrow, so right. I want to go through the weekend as well. Right. Saturday, we have Bob Ingram. Yes. And on Sunday, we have Alice Dudley. Right. Uh, so happy so birthday to right. everyone. And we need to remind everybody about Quora theme next week, right? Yes, yes. Isn't that how you say it? Quora theme? I don't know. Quarantine. theme. Quorin. Quorin. Boy, I, that's Quorin a hard one theme. to say. Quorin theme. <laughs> yes, that's it. So, <laughs> so make sure you, you wear the right things on the right day. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying that more for me than anything else, I think, because i got to try to remember that. So. <laughs> oh. Okay, did we okay. have a trivia winner today? We do. So the okay. question today was, what city was the European green capital for 2019? Did either of you know the answer? I don't think so. No. 
You want to take a guess? I want to say Dublin, but... Well, that's what I, I was going to guess. Is that what you were going to guess? going to guess. Wrong. I guess right. <laughs> 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 <It's> wrong. <laughs> I was going to say it a little nicer. That's not oh, quite Oh, sorry. That was, I was being a little mean there, wasn't I? <laughs> so the answer is Oslo, Norway. Okay. Ah, yeah. So that was a good question. Okay. And the winner today is Max Vibbert. Oh, Way to go, Max. Max. Yay. Congratulations, Max. Good job, So Max. you have the vegetable box heading your way from Brian. Um, so thank you for that. And let's see. Let's talk about... Next week. Yeah. What do we have for next? Because tomorrow is the honeymooners, right? Isn't that? Tomorrow's the honeymooners. Yeah. Yes. So next week our lineup is looking really good too. Uh oh. Okay. Who do we Monday, got? Monday we have the Lotties. The Lotties coming on. Yes. Okay. They're going to come on and talk a little bit about the annual appeal yep. and uh, whatever else right. they might want to talk about. Yeah. So. Yep. Never know. Tuesday the honeymooners. Wednesday we have Ken back again. Thursday, we have Homer doing some emergency preparedness. Okay. So that's exciting right now. Homer? Homer. Whiz. Homer is going to be on next week. Outstanding. Yes. <laughs> That'll be great. Your, your friend Homer. <laughs> Sometimes people call me Homer because they get confused. Horner and Homer. Oh, of course I can see that, yes. Maybe if okay. you had a different last name. <laughs> no, I like the one I've got. Okay. You wouldn't want... You're not baiting me on this. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because Homer's in the room and you're afraid? I'm leaving through the back door. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times have you been called your nickname today? <laughs> he's only been here three hours and he's been called his nickname ten times. <laughs> so, so in case you haven't watched the show, Homer Honeycakes. That's that's <laughs> There's number 11. <laughs> oh, it still hasn't gotten old yet, Wes. Okay. No, no, yeah. we got a little more to go on that one. Um, and then Friday, we're going to have a surprise guest. <laughs> is that because we haven't figured out who it is yet? We haven't figured out yet. I think it ought to be Michelle. <laughs> it might be Michelle. I think if we can't get my house, we might get Michelle in there. <laughs> She's a she's, good fill-in for us. She's been behind the scene for <laughs> yes, Maybe we should bring She's her always going to be the yeah. fill-in for us <laughs> if we can't find somebody. <laughs> Michelle might be on the show more than anybody by the time we're done. <laughs> she might Goes be. Wakes you all up just before 3 o'clock so you can get down here at work <laughs> Exactly. <that way. laughs> you know, Wiz, we tried to give away a spot to be a guest on the show. Nobody applied. Well, you know, people have to watch the show to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say not much. Let's not say much for the two of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have somebody from next week from OSM that'll be here. We might. We <laughs> might. I don't know. I love that. They're turning us down after the last one. Yeah. So I'm not we sure. already asked one. <laughs> she said we asked Julia Hanover. If she wanted to be on the show, and she said <laughs> she at the first raffle. What would she say, Lisa? No way. <laughs> You couldn't pay she me to do I'm that. said, I'm busy Monday through Friday. I said, well, maybe the next week. Every Monday through Friday. So <laughs> you can't have the CIO back over here. No, we can't have the CIO, <laughs> that's for sure. We can't. No. We might be able to have the CPO or something like that. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, that should be fun next week. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay. Um, we do have a joke that was given to us, right? And it's... From an anonymous an resident. Anonymous resident. <laughs> resident doesn't want to be associated <laughs> with the joke. So maybe after you hear it, you'll understand why. So I think it's a little edgy, Tom. It's edgy. Well, it's edgy. it can't be any more edgier than what our um, Freddie Bob was the other night. <laughs> that's for sure. I don't well, that's think true. so. Okay. So um, this is called the psychologist and the proctologist. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 Two doctors, a psychiatrist and a proctologist, open an office in a small town and put up a sign reading, Dr. Smith and Dr. Jones, Psychology and Proctology. The town council was not happy with the sign, so the doctors changed it to read, Dr. Jones and Dr. Smith, Proctology and Psychology. I just reversed it there. It was also turned down. So in an effort to try to please the council, the two thought of a list of increasingly desperate titles. Are you ready? Mm. <laughs> Schizoids and hemorrhoids was unacceptable, <laughs> as was hysterias, hysterias and posteriors. 
catatonics and high colonics, <laughs> and manic depressives and anal retentives. <laughs> the council rejected minds and behinds, <laughs> lost souls and buttholes, <laughs> and analysis and anal cysts. <laughs> there wasn't a chance that nuts and butts, <laughs> freaks and cheeks, or loons and moons could have any future as a sign either. <laughs> Finally, the two doctors posted up a sign which the council accepted at last. It read, Dr. Smith and Dr. Jones, odds and ends. <laughs> I like that. That was a good one. So you, thank you. Our anonymous, anonymous resident, you could have put your name to that one. I yeah, think it would have been all right. I don't think anybody would have written. Was it bad, Wick? Uh, I'm a good Presbyterian. I can't comment. <laughs> 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 well, it's end time to end another show, but I want to say thanks again to Jim and Wiz for being here today. Um, also, since we're not going to be on tomorrow, I think all of us, from all of us, we want to say um, happy, Mother's happy Mother's Day to Mother's all day. of our mothers Mother's on day. Sunday. Um, we hope you have a great day on Sunday, and um, and we love you all very much. So hang in there. We know that um, this isn't fun or easy sometimes going through what we're going through, but you know what? The important thing is to keep us all safe, and so that's what we're trying to do, and we're going to keep trying to do that. So we love you. Have a great weekend. Great. Thank you.